All right. Thank you. And they'll be here shortly along with Miss Sony, who you'll get a chance to meet. Um, thank you so much for being here. I'm truly, truly, truly grateful. All right, ladies. Well, let me uh, take a moment to, uh, again, introduce myself. I, as the others come in, I want to respect everybody's time. So since you all are here, I'd like to just get started. This is being recorded. So those who are not able to attend um, later, now at this time, can watch us later. Um, there you are, Rhea. Beautiful face. Beautiful. <laughs> Good. Great to see you. <laughs> So I wanted to take a moment to introduce myself. My name is Sister Yaya. Um, I am. I put my bio in the chat so y'all can read all that academic formal stuff. But um, I'm Sister Yaya. I am a Kwanzaa healer, uh, mom, wife, and friend, sister. Um, I've been doing this healing work for a very long time since I was four years old. I've been aware of the healing work of my ancestors. I've seen my mother practice. I've seen my grandmother, my grandfather, my great aunties practice this tradition of indigenous healing whilst we live in the States. Currently, I live here in Mexico, with my husband and my baby, um, here in Chichilu, where we'll be having our time together. And uh, November will actually make, November? No, September will actually make two years, two years of being here. Absolutely love, love, love being here. When I got here, my life exploded. It got so much better. My gifts got stronger. Um, my healing accelerated. And this is one of the reasons why I wanted to do this training, right? Because when I got here in a different environment, I started spending a lot of times with the paderas, which are midwives, Maya midwives, and the healers and the herbalists. And I'm like, oh my gosh, this is so good. I wanted to be able to share this with so many people. I want to be able to share this with so many other energies. And so um, we came up with the concept of um, small individual retreats, people who just wanted to come to Mexico to rest, um, come to just get healed, to, to just have a different environment. And I wanted everybody to experience what I've experienced. So one by one, people kept coming to Mexico and getting healed and getting breakthroughs and breaking generational curses and doing so many. I was learning so much. I said, wait a minute, I want to share this others, like other doulas, other helpers, because I know when I had my baby in the States, I was looking for somebody who had some indigenous hands. Who can do me a sabata? Who can rub my back the right way? The way I know my ancestors did it, I couldn't find it. So when I got here, I was like, oh my gosh, this is great. So let's learn, let's get together and let's see how we can share this information with other people. And so this is how the retreat started. Um, and when Leslie, if she's able to, or Ivana hop on, they'll tell their stories about their time here. But that's just a little bit about me. I'm very down to earth, very easy to get along with. Um, I am initiated in my craft, um, on the indigenous healing side. I am, um, also initiating into the Mayan spiritual system as well. And so, um, that is quite interesting in and of itself. And, uh, I keep learning, keep growing, keep sharing and keep updating this this ancestral wisdom. So we wanna share that with all. So that's a little bit about me. Welcome, Tony. Um, Kiara, so good to see you, your beautiful face. Thank you, thank you, thank you for being present. Nyla, thank you and welcome. Um, just wanna give y'all the opportunity to introduce yourself. Tell us about who you are, where you're coming from, why you wanted, why you wanted to come on this experience and uh, or whatever else you wanna say. We're, we're family. And one thing um, we do, we do this family thing. And I know sometimes we get formal. We don't know each other. I get all that. But when you come in the tribe, you can be yourself. You can be yourself inside, outside, all around. This is a place for you. So who would like to go first and tell us about themselves? Okay, since so nobody wants to go, yeah, I see Nyla. I don't know if she's trying to say something. He's trying to say something, Nyla. I'm not sure, but I see you um, highlighted on my screen. Hi. Oh. Hi. How you doing? I'm fine. How are you? Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, my name is Nyla. I'm from Atlanta, but I currently live in California. Um, I'm a doula as of like maybe a month ago. So I'm brand new and 
yeah I felt I, I don't know how I found it it was I was kind of like on like a deep dive one night and just kind of I found it and I felt called to it so I like paid immediately for it so yeah awesome well, we're, we're grateful that you're here tell us about your doula experience so far you say you're just a month into it tell us a little bit about uh, what made you want to become a doula and what you've experienced so far um so I my mom had like three children after I was 16 so um yeah my youngest siblings she had them after my like four days after my 18th birthday so I yeah I watched her do that and I just kind of saw a lot of things that didn't really feel right or seem right so at the time I didn't know they were exactly wrong because it was my first and second experience with birth but then it was just like mm -hmm. after like really like looking into it it was like okay yeah this is like obviously not right so um that's kind of in what inspired it and then I went to school and I was an education major and that also didn't work for me so here we are you are welcome. Well, welcome to this space. Welcome Thank so you. much. You're welcome. Sometimes our life experiences, experiences rather, initiate us into our work. Um, so it's nice to hear that the, ex the experience with your mother and watching her give birth to her three, uh, your three other siblings, that that inspire you to move forward on this journey. So thank you. Grateful for your presence. Who would like to go next? I can go I next. Can go next. Yes. Um, so I currently live in Maryland. Um, I lived in New Orleans for a long time, which is where I found your website through uh, Sister Midwife Productions. That's oh, where I trained as a doula. Yeah. Um, so I I got my certification maybe two years ago now. Um, I've done two births, but I haven't really been able to get into doula work since living in Maryland. Mm -hmm. So um, I think I'm just trying to like you know, dive deeper into like the dual spirituality aspect of it. Um, I got my labor training from Sister Midwife, but I got my postpartum from Pro Doula, and the training are completely different. So I definitely like, um, you know, Sister Midwife's edge or take on being a doula, and I want to like go deeper into that. And I also became an herbalist for postpartum stuff, so I want to like get that certification and um indigenous um herbalism and stuff like that so that's why i'm I'm going to the training to like delve more into doula stuff and the spirituality behind it okay, wow thank you um kiara you may want to look up uh a goddess called each shell that's um i'll put it in the chat and the reason uh, you mentioned the spirituality piece is because she is the mayan goddess of medicine birth and death right and her energy is pretty much strong here. Um, I'm gonna put that, I'm gonna put it in the chat so everyone can see it in, in a link. Um, and it's really, really strong. And a lot of the buy-in midwives, uh, they incorporate that energy into their birth work. And in addition to other things, like one of the midwives we'll visit with or we'll see, um, she uses a mix of indigenous ways and kind of Christian ways. And I've seen her do some amazing work, but she's going to tell us our secret on how she's able to mix the two and how she makes miracles happen because everything is energy. Everything is energy. So you will definitely get a lot of that spiritual, spiritual component when it comes to birth. We'll also learn about ceremonies after birth. How can you better serve our clients? Because, you know, after they give baby, they're no longer pregnant. They're a new person. They're not, they're not, they wasn't the person they were prior to. And so how do we bring in this energy? I know a lot of us have the blessing way ceremonies. Um, but there's some things that we can do hands-on, like massage wise, and also ceremony and, and energy wise to help her to cut the ties of the time of pregnancy and to welcome the new energy of being a mother again or for the first time. So we got a lot of juicy things <laughs> to talk about. Uh, any questions that you may have about spirituality and this and that, you can always drop it in the chat or feel free to answer. But when you get here, we're going to talk a little bit about the place, Chichilu, where we're going to um, be studying. You're going to feel the vibration. It is it's one of a kind. So we'll talk a little bit about that. So I'm excited to have you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I see Tony, Tony Curtis in the house. Hi, Tony. Hello, hello. How are you? I'm good. It's our dinner time, so I was... Try. 
Oh, I appreciate it. It's our dinner time too. So I, <laughs> I appreciate it. How you how you doing? Let us know about yourself. Okay. We'll see where I start. Um, I am Tony Curtis. I am a birth doula. I'm a doula. I'm a full spectrum doula. Um, I'm an educator and a lactation counselor. I've been a doula for 27 years. Wow. It's a debate. Do we go by it when I got trained or when I went to the first birth? Which one? Whatever one you want to go by. Whatever yeah. one you want to go by. That, that, that's, that's, <laughs> that's always the debate. So if we go by when I got, I'm sorry, it's loud in my house. I got dogs and kids. That's okay. Um, <laughs> uh, if we go by when I got trained, I've been doing it for 28 years. If we go by when I went to my first birth, I've been doing it for 27 years. It's been a wow. joke. Running joke this year is everybody's pushing me towards saying that I'm close to 30 years into this. I'm like, wow. Wow. That's amazing. Um, I own Birthwise Doula Services out of Charlotte, North Carolina. Mm -hmm. Uh we practice uh, whole person, whole centered care. And so we are always, and I am always looking for ways to incorporate more mm -hmm. um, for our families and for the community as a whole that I support. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot to the my background and I don't want to take up the entire opening, <laughs> but that is at least the in general me. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. I, I sense that there's going to be a lot that your experience here will be able to add to your current practice um, in our indigenous ways. It's, it's just so much, like so, so, so much. I know you talked a little bit with Ivana and she told you some of the things that we experienced, but I, I know that some of these indigenous practices, um, you mentioned something about the whole person. And that's the mm -hmm. part, that's, as we know, is often missing in our care system, system of care is not seeing you as, oh, you have a fever. But you as a person, what are the emotions? What are the family dynamics? What are the energies at play? And so our job um, as Indigenous healers is to look at everything, like you said, person as a as a whole. So we're excited to share our wisdom, to add to your wisdom. So thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> Appreciate that. Awesome. All right. So we have one more. Let's see, Miss Rhea Rose. Hi, everybody. Um, I am Leah. Excuse my son. He wants to say hi to everybody I talk to. <laughs> Mine does too. We just walk by. Oh, hello, honey. Hi. Okay. What's up? What's questions? Um, I am a holistic doula. I've been um, a doula since 2021. Um, I am also uh, going to school to be a holistic health practitioner, and I am an herbalist. Uh, prior to that, um, I was in the military for 11 years. I got out in 2021. Mm -hmm. I am currently in uh, Virginia right now, and I'll be moving over to Georgia for a couple months while my husband is on deployment. And that's all. I think that's it. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Nice. Thank you, Rhea. You say you work as a holistic doing herbalist. Is there a particular type of herbalism you prefer? Um, no. No? Okay. You're definitely going to enjoy our Caribbean and Mayan herbalism course. Um, <laughs> we use um, herbs for internal. We teach you how to use herbs internally, but also herbs externally like for mm -hmm. energetic issues, spiritual issues, how to help children sleep better and different things like that. So we're happy to mm -hmm. show you and we're excited to show you how to um, add on to the wisdom that you already have. So we are so excited to have you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, ladies, we're not going to be too long tonight. I realize it is Sunday and some of you may have children that have to go to school tomorrow. So not going to be much long, but I do want to take a moment to share with you a little bit more about our experience. I'm going to share my screen with you so you can see um, what we have lined up for you. And um, one thing I like to share is that sometimes retreats, um, experiences, focuses a lot on just the learning part of it. And by all means, that's, that's so important. But what we like to do here and what we're doing is also focus on your own healing. Um, it's great to know how to heal. 
share other people, use our modalities. But sometimes we have own things in our hearts. Sometimes we have things that need to be addressed. And so your experience with us here will help us to get to some of the root of those things in a safe environment, while also giving you some tools in which you can go back and to improve your, um, your communities and to improve your work. And so um, I'm gonna pull up a free presentation. My screen, I'm still on music. Let's turn this down. Thank you as I... Uh... Share together, okay. Can you hear me well? Is the music too loud? Could you let me know if it's too loud? I'm going to put it in the chat. If you can hear me well. Can you hear me well, everyone? Yes. Okay, perfect. Perfect. So this is actually the back your backyard for the next nine nights. <laughs> it's actually this location. I can post more pictures in the chat if you'd like to see. It's a um, beachfront location here in um, Chichilu, Yucatan. Uh, so I wanted to show your pictures um, actually on the beach. So beyond the palm trees is the ocean. And you have a pool, bedrooms, huge kitchen, places to relax and feel to do our yoga. So I wanted to show you a picture of um, staying our time together. So our company, Soul Tribe Heals, we specialize in indigenous healing, uh, Caribbean healing, which includes that of the Yucatan, is also considered part of the uh, Caribbean. We are based in ancestral traditional wisdom and herbalism. And our, the, the reason for our company is really to preserve the ways of our ancestors, preserve the ways of how do they heal themselves? How do they raise children? When there was war or peacetime, how do we make these things happen? During our time together, you will learn 10 plus healing modalities, uh, cord, including cord cutting, also how to break generational curses, things that you may find that may come up in your work quite often. You will learn a lot of healing modalities in addition to the hands-on um, practice. You will cover over 20 plus herbal, modal, herbal remedies for um, prenatal, postpartum, pregnancy, and beyond, things that concern things of the family, of the whole, as Tony mentioned earlier. How we got started? Well, um, it came from me being diagnosed with cervical cancer, hypoglycemia, liver disease, a whole bunch of other things. And I couldn't figure out what was going on. I went to all medical doctors. They had no idea. And in our tradition, it is said, um, the healers or the shaman's call is when you're really sick and there is no remedy or the, uh, the illness, then we have to get to the energy of it. Then we have to see what is spirit saying. So I start to remember the ways, thankfully, of my ancestors on how to heal myself. And I was able to heal myself from all of these conditions and then some. Um, and that really started my conscious awakening. Although I've had this gift of mediumship, of healing since I was four years old, but it came online um, after a lot of crisis in my life. Um, Hurricane Ida destroyed our home in 2021, which moved us here to Mexico. It was my husband and my son and two suitcases. We had lost everything in our hurricane. And um, this was the only place we could come. We had we had thought about Mexico and said, maybe we'll come, we don't know, but um, we had nowhere else to go. The door opened wide open for us to be here. So that's how we landed here. And that's how the story goes. I want you to meet a few of our team members who you will see throughout your time with us. Some of you know uh, everyone here. Some of some this some for some of you rather, it's the first time you're meeting um, some of us. So of course you have me. You you should know Ms. Zoni, who's also part of the chat. She's our international program assistant and herbal apprentice. And then we have Miss Ivana from Atlanta. She's a doula healer. And Miss Leslie, who's also a wonderful doula and a healer as well. And all of us have attended the first round of this training. So they're all aware of what you can expect. You can reach out to any of us at any time with any questions. We are here to help and to serve you. Next, what are our whys? Why, why are we um, 
why are our whys important? What is this about? So our whys is about preserving rather um, our ancestral knowledge and wisdom that belongs to us. Ancestral healing wisdom is our birthright. It is for us. This is why we're here. This is, belong this is our gift. This is what we were supposed to have. And through the passage of time, a lot of that has been stripped away from us. But now we are reclaiming and we are remembering and we are bringing this information to parts of the world that have been desolate of this information for a long time, such as the United States. Um, so we want, so that's why your role is so important because you will be an ambassador to take this wisdom, bring it to your homes, your communities and spread it out so this world can be healed or more healed than it is right now. But it is our birthright. Secondly, we know that common illnesses can be completely healed when we remember who we are. What do we mean when we say who we are? That we all have the power to heal ourselves. We all have the power to be made brand new. We all have the power to rejuvenate, to replenish. I've seen so many miracles since I've been here of situations and cases where doctors have given up on people. Uh, people have gone to doctors for years and years and they come here and they get instant relief. So this is what we want to remember, how to do these things. And this is one of the whys, because we know that simple things can be healed in the ways of our ancestors. And third, it's because we are healing and breaking those generational curses that have been in our families and our communities that for too, too long. When we're able to change the vibration of the things that have gone on in our lives for a long time, not only do we heal ourselves, but we heal seven generations after us, and then seven generations before us. So I tell parents with children, I say, you know what? You don't have to keep fussing or arguing or getting in with your children. You do the work. And I'll show you ritual. You do the work. And it's going to heal everything around you. That way you're not exhausting yourself. <laughs> that way you can work with more ease and grace and not having to put all of your energy into it. So we're going to teach you these ways. And the photos that you see here are participants. Um, we're doing a variety of different healing methods from herbalism to um, the one in the center. You'll see Miss Leslie there. We're doing cord cutting on her. Um, such a powerful time of us sharing and learning. And then the one with the, um, the young lady touching the hair of another young lady, they were learning a type of sabata for migraine, which is a perfect. And of course, you have the cenotes, which are the um, healing waters of the Yucatan. I'll talk a little bit more about that in a Okay, so why Chichulú? Why Chichulú, Mexico? This place is a sacred portal. If you Google Chichulú Crater, you'll see a lot of information about a crater that came here about 66 million years ago, they said. But it left a vibration. Um, it's actually in the shape of a circle. Um, and the watering holes that it created are called cenotes, which I'll talk about that later. But this land has a vibration of no other. Even now, you can go to the ocean, which... I live on the ocean and still extract crystals, um, my quartz crystals I put on my altar, um, from the water itself. It's very healing, very relaxing. The old ancestral spirits are very active here. So you're not just training at any location in Acapulco or Cancun. All those places are great and they have their own magic. But this place in itself carries a specific history because of the portal that is open here called the Chichulu Crater. Talk to, I, said, I said a little bit about the uh, underground uh, watering holes called cenotes. Those are very sacred and very special to Yucatan. Not a lot of places in Mexico has have this particular um, water source. And when you get into it, it's fresh. It just makes you almost feel brand new, like you're into the womb of the mother. It's very special. But, and also, the Mayan culture and the indigenous ways are still intact here. I live in a Mayan village. Chichilub is a Mayan village. I live in Chichilub. Um, you still see the women dressed in some of their traditional clothing. I'm wearing one of their dresses now from their banderas, which is a healer dresses now. Um, a lot of their ways in which they communicate with each other, even a lot of people still speak Maya. And so you'll get a chance to experience a little bit while you're here of the Mayan culture, including the food and learn more about the indigenous ways here. So Chichilub is very, 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 um, very, very special for that reason and so many more, so much more. So I thought about 
said to myself, okay, what would you would need to know right now? There's other things. We'll do another orientation later in which we'll uh, talk about some other things that you need to know before coming. But what do you need to know like right now? I said, well, the clothes. What do you need to pack to wear for this part of the world? Uh, here in Chichilu, is still pretty much jungle, pretty much. And so it can be humid. Like right now, it's really humid. Um, the hot season is kind of going away a little bit and it's just cooling off. So it stays around about 85 degrees um, in November around that time. But at night, it can drop down to 65 degrees. Um, so I'm just asking you to just find clothing that's comfortable, that you like to wear, that you feel good in. Um, simpler, the better. You want to bring two all-white outfits and two head wraps. It can be something simple like this because we will do ceremony. And if you don't have white, has something that's yellow or light color, that's perfectly fine as well. I'm going to bring two, minimum two. For the days that we'll be doing our Sobata training, our hands-on training, wear clothes that you don't mind getting soiled with oil, um, plant material. If you don't mind getting a little something on it, wear those clothes. <laughs> don't wear your very expensive clothes that day, those three days for three days. Don't wear your, your most expensive clothes that day because we are hands-on. We are touching all kinds of stuff, playing with a lot of different things. So um, just wear what feels comfortable for you. Anything that is like feeling or super tight, you know, I said you refrain from it because it is kind of hot. And also, um, you know, we'll, we'll be moving around and stretching and doing a variety of different things. So we want you to be comfortable. You can wear yoga pants if you want, a little fitted shirt. Um, I don't suspect to be any issues with like ceremonies and things like that. We ask this more on the modest side for like your white clothes. But outside of that, you're free to bring whatever you like. We'll send you a list of things to pack with you. The mosquitoes aren't bad this time of the year. And then we're on the beach. So we have the advantage of the, um, the ocean breeze. Um, comfortable shoes and sandals. We will visit um, Chichen Itza, which is a sacred, one of the seven wonders of the world. And it's a sacred Mayan pyramid. And there's a cenote there. So you will be, you know, walking around, climbing the pyramid. I think they still allow us to climb the pyramid. Um, well, I'll find out next week. So I'm going to go and do some work there. Um, so something that's going to be comfortable for you. So that gives you an idea of where you can start packing, how you should start packing. Um, but for now, that's that's it. There's not much to um, prepare you for. We've already sent out some information in the PDF, got the other video. But if you have any particular questions about what we'll be doing or what this looks like, I am very much happy to uh, to answer those questions for you at this time. Questions. I have more of a question from the airport. <clears throat> the airport transportation. How do we get from the airport to you? Airport transportation? Yes. Mm -hmm. So if you arrive by 2 p.m. on the day um, of, which is the 11th, we will provide transportation for you. If your flight information um, is outside, for whatever reason, just let us know and we'll help you to arrange transportation to get, to get from the airport to the location. We'll have a shuttle available. Um, and if you're coming in from Cancun, some people are deciding to come in from Cancun, we also provide transportation and then that ride will be there about 3.30 in the afternoon. Again, if your flight lies outside of those hours, you can just let us know. Yeah, we we land, either, either of our flight options land after two. Okay. They land right around two o'clock. That's not a problem. Um, just send me a message and I'll get my assistant to arrange something for you to come. Are you coming in? Who are you coming in with, if you don't mind me asking? Sienna. Oh, okay. Okay, perfect. Perfect. Yeah, Sienna's one of my doulas and so is E or Ivana. Okay, okay, okay. I got the connection now. Connect. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Do you have so you have the exact time? You're right at two o'clock? Yeah, it looks like either will arrive around two o four or two eighteen. Okay. Um, based on the time that they leave from here, we're just we haven't decided if we're gonna change in Dallas or if we're gonna change in Miami. Okay, <clears throat> that's perfect. That's it. We'll arrange for you. We'll arrange. Yeah, okay. No stress there. Yep. We'll take care of it for you. Yes. Okay. Thanks, yes, ma'am. My pleasure. My pleasure. Anyone else have any questions?
Now, I want to remind you, um, this is going to be a big time for your personal healing. It, it is. I can't minimize that enough. It's going to be a big time for our personal healing. And the great thing is we get to do it as a group. And I love group healings because we we share in the energy. We support each other. Um, we'll be doing Temescal. You'll be invited to do Temescal, which is a Mayan sweat lodge, uh, which is amazing. You'll be invited to do cacao ceremony with us, which is amazing. Opens up your heart tremendously and some other plant medicines. So start thinking about what is it yourself that you want for yourself. Everyone else is great. Everyone else is going to be fine. They're going to be fine. What, what do you want for you? What is the breakthrough that you're looking for? I want you to start thinking about that because that is going to be so key and pivotal in how this experience unfolds for you. And everyone's going to have a different experience. But what do you want for you? So you have a couple of months to think about what do you what is it that you want to break through, you want to manifest for you, and we're going to ask spirit to do that for you at that time. As well. Any questions? Anyone? But this video is recorded, so I'll send it out into the group so you'll have it. If you need anything, you have my direct phone number, our WhatsApp group. Um, but we're here to serve you and to give some love and support. And if no one has any questions, um, I'd like to say thank you for being a part of this experience. Thank you for um, helping to preserve our collective cultural wisdom, our collective cultural healing ways and bring it to your communities. And we're just so grateful to be a part of this experience and to share what we have. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Kiara. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. You're welcome. Thank you, Nyla. Thank you, Tony. Everyone have a Thank great you. night. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome, darling. Bye-bye. <laughs>